Hello, welcome to Chief Workshop. Visit our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and uh, look for the link in the description where you'll find uh, a free mini course in that link. And uh, well worth your while. So let's get started. Good morning. Today we're going to work on importing a PDF um, file into uh, Chief so we can use it as a trace for uh, locating a new garage, which would be put right here onto the PDF. This is a proposal PDF uh, drawing from uh, the uh, survey engineer uh, indicating uh, what his scope of work was going to be, his boundary survey. And he did a nice job going on Google Earth, uh, overlaying the known uh, topography in two foot intervals. And uh, one thing I did not realize is that the house is actually going downhill, which is good for the height restriction. And this is rather steep. These are two foot boundary indications. So with a 20 foot height restriction to the top, the, the garage is going to sit here. We got two, four, six, eight, ten, ten feet drop by the time we get to here. So we're going to be fine with the height restriction. Building height. That's uh, one of the elements that we need to concern ourselves with. Uh, so we go into the zoning book, which is available in most uh, villages on, online these days. You don't have to run into the village. Uh, so you can see what the uh, building height is. Here it is, the um, average existing grade at the two points where the front yard setback line is six side yard to the highest point of the structure. Uh, so we, we figured out that we were okay. Uh, when you first start a project, ideally, a uh, good idea is to go into the building department and talk to a zoning official and tell them what you're planning on doing. In this case, you're going to be putting on a uh, garage, an accessory building onto your property, and uh, what do you have to look out for? And they'll tell you. They'll look up the zoning book, and they'll tell you the setback, the height restrictions, front yard restrictions, uh, for example, in one town, the front yard is based on the average of the uh, all the houses on the block. It's not just a standard 35, 40 feet. So one house might be 45, one house might be 50, and you have to average them out. And that's the sort of stuff you can only get if you go into the village. In this case, we went into the uh, code book online to figure out what are the requirements of the R1 single-family uh, residence district. Again, we look up the uh, requirements in the zoning district, and we find uh, our main thing that we are interested in is make sure we're away from the side yard, uh, that we don't encroach on the side yard, uh, which is 20 feet in this case. Uh, everything else we're more than fine. And the other thing is we the garage is defined as an accessory use, and it's 20 feet, and we found what the... Uh, height limitations are uh, for that in the definitions of the code. For example, one town calls it the average of the height of the attic space, which would let the building be a little taller. And the other thing we need to concern ourselves with is the lot coverage, the principal structure. Since it is more than one story, it's a two-story home. It should not exceed uh, 20%. So we got to Make sure we're not at 20% uh, with lot coverage, which I believe we are fine with that. The first um, PDF that I received from the owner uh, was this little photograph that he sent. He scanned it and says, okay, here is the survey. And you can barely see how he's kind of sketched in his garage on there. And uh, as I said, that is not going to work for us. We're going to need to hire a uh, surveyor to actually do a 
a real um, survey of the property. And notice there's no topography on here. You don't know what the heck is going on. And we found out it was going downhill when we actually called a surveyor to uh, see what was going on. So step one, make sure you put all your chief uh, information on the drawing into one folder. This one we'll call architectural. It has the uh, chief files in there and the plat. So we have a plat um, nicely done. Um, legal description, boundary, house, pool. Um, very nicely done. Now we need to stick this into our chief drawing. Uh, this drawing is a lot easier to use than the uh, mucked up one from the owner. So we go into our directory, which has all the files, and we pull up the one that we want. Uh, this one here. Open it up. And there it is. There are all the client's uh, requirements. 25 foot deep, a little extra deep because he wants to work on his cars. Um, his garage spacing the way he wants it and um, 45 feet across. So let's see what that looks like in 3D. Um, create a perspective floor overview, full overview. And that's kind of what the thing looks like in 3D, a little preliminary. Now he wants to add some dormers on the back side, but we can cover that in another video. This one is about uh, making sure this thing fits. We're going to need a separate layer for the PDF. So we're going to go to CAD, copy the CAD default layer by picking CAD default in our default layer set. Hit copy. And we're going to rename it. Click it here. We're going to name it CAD uh, Site PDF. And we're going to click OK. And we've created that. And now we want to make that our current CAD layer. So we go to CAD, current CAD layer. And we slide that. And there it is. We're going to make that CAD site PDF is our current CAD layer. Now let's go to our plot plan set. And let's bring in that drawing and see what happens. Let's make sure that uh, the current CAD layer is still CAD site PDF. It is. So we'll go File, Import the CAD PDF, which is Import PDF, right there. And uh, that's from a download. Let's go to where it really is, which is in this client's directory, architectural. Yeah, that's it. And there it is, and hit OK. Yes, we wanted, I thought it was displayed. Well, let's display it. There it is. Okay, a few issues. It's upside down. So let's just rotate that just so we can have some sense of what's going on there. And obviously the house is not lined with that, but we'll worry about that a little later. This is allegedly at one inch, one inch equals to 40 and we need to bring it to true world units. Let's keep this nice and clean and get rid of everything except what we need to work with. So we will go here and we're going to turn everything off. Let's go to our all offset and everything is off. So we need to turn on what we need to work with. There it is. So let's measure what this drawing is. Uh, it's nice that this L2 is 350 feet. 
So let's draw a line along L2 and see what it really is. And we are going to go from there to there, and it's a little crooked, but we will figure that out later. Let's go to there, and let's see where we're at. That is, what is that line? Let's click on the line and examine it. And that line is 260 inches. Okay, let's um, bring up a calculator. Slide it over here, clear our entry, and take 350 feet times 12 inches. 4,200, and we divide that by 260, and that'll be our factor, which is that. Let's copy this. All right, let's get rid of the calculator, get rid of that. Let's click on our PDF, edit it, and what we'd like to do is multiply that with uh, 408 times our factor. So let's bring up our calculator again. Where are you, Mr. Calculator? There we go. And hopefully we have that in memory. Let's go 408 times paste equal that. Now let's take this, copy, and we paste it into here. And hit the tab key so that the ratio remains the same. Hit OK. And we've got that zoomed out to the max. And let's measure that line again. Somewhere there's that little line, and we've multiplied it 16 sometimes. Let's see what the, now that we blew the drawing up, let's see what it is. Line, let's find ourselves a line. Draw the line, find a start point, find an end point, and it's just, the drawing's a little bit crooked, but look at the line measurement. 350 foot one inch. I think we can tolerate about an inch discrepancy. I believe we can. Okay, so now we have the garage, and uh, we have the angle of the house, and we want to make that perpendicular to that. So let's use our angle dimension and find out what this angle is. We've snapped this line across, and we've hit it there. There's the uh, apex of the angle, but really... Oh, Chief will dimension that. Yeah, let's let's dimension that angle. Angular dimension. Uh, plot plan annotations are on, so we can see it a decent size. Um, and angle. Let's go from what is it from there to there. That is uh, 64 degrees, 54 seconds, 33 minutes. All right, if we add it to the minus 90, it equals 154 degrees, 54 minutes, 33 seconds. And that's the angle that we would want. So let's um, take our paper plot plan. And right now we're at minus 90. We want to be at minus... 154 degrees space, 54 seconds space, 33 minutes. Enter. And that is now rotated. You can see that that is now parallel to that. And 
let's slide that guy over there because that's that is what we want and what we want to do then is um, we want to pop the we want to pop this corner should probably be somewhere uh, close to here so let's see if we can do that um, let's do our point to point move we already got the paper space picked and from this paper space corner we want that to that and that places the garage on that corner um, let's see how far away it is from this property line by placing a line let's draw a line let's pick a point here use our control to figure out the angle line it up exactly there so we have a line there and we have um, let's get another line here how far away is that corner we're, we're not we're definitely not at the 20 feet but let's see where we're at let's uh we want this line to be perpendicular to this line now is and now let's measure let's measure the setback once we got at this corner where are we on the setback okay that we really want an end on because we want to be able to play with that slide that around so well, what I did was I extended these lines so we could really get a good end-to-end -end dimension going. And it will not show up <laughs> until now. All right, let's get rid of this so we're not confused. And we really want this to be 20 foot 6. Let's see, we want 20 foot 6 inches to be on the safe side. There we go. So we want to we want to slide this guy from, from there to there. So paper, pick the paper. We want to pick the paper, and we want this paper point to go from here to here. And now, see now it added that twenty sixes, twenty foot sixes there. And what it did was it ate into the driveway a little bit, but that's okay. That's okay. We can we got more than what we need there. And so let's let's dimension this. Let's move this guy. This line is now there. Uh, let's slide this line here and. Again, let's go to our end-to-end -end dimension. Let's slide this end -to end dimension. Hello, let's see if we can... Uh, we need to make this 20 foot 6. 20 foot 6 there. There he is. And there. It's now at that corner. And we've got 6 inches to spare, so we know we're pretty good. Even with our little 1 inch because of that angle deal. We are pretty good, and the civil engineer will make sure we're good. Uh, we know it'll work when we stake this thing out. So that is how you make sure that your PDF lines up with your chief drawing where you want it. And in a second video, we'll cover how to draw the plot plan accurately. But this was uh, how to use a calculation to get the PDF paper space site plan where you want it. Thank you for watching. Remember to visit our website uh, where there's a blog which we will upload all the uh, free tutorials. Subscribe to our YouTube channel which also will have uh, the tutorials. Uh, look in the description for a free mini course in Chief Architect. Uh, click on that and take advantage of that and uh, see you next time.